Here I am with Mato Fradiani from Pissarro, Italy, who's come to talk to the Florida Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry for our 2012 annual scientific session and trade show. I'm going to ask Mato a few questions. Dr. Fradiani, what do you, have you seen has been the greatest change in our industry? Oh, actually, I think the last decade at least, we had a lot of different, uh, I mean, news from the industries. Uh, talking about techniques and materials, of course. Of course, I think the big development of the CAD CAM technique is the major fact in uh, the industry. And of course, also for the people like us as dentists that have to work with. And of course, also in the field of materials, especially ceramic material. As you know, I mean, the old ceramic restoration came out, the first one in 85, so many years ago. I was one of the starter, you know, that I started to use like Dicor and Isoram, that probably you don't know, because uh, they came out in 85. But then we had a lot of problems, breakage, etc., etc. But the concept was there, was very, very good. So I feel the last decade, uh, two major families of the ceramic came out in the proper way. One is the Astrain ceramic, that one is the silica-based ceramics. So in one, in one side, the zirconia oxide, polycrystalline material came out that are very, very strong. And of course, most of the dentists uh, start to be confident with the old ceramic restoration because they understood that probably this kind of material never breaks, at least the core. The core is very, very strong. But then we had some problem actually with the chipping rate of the ceramic over the copying, but now seems to be much, much better. And, and that is a point. Second, the other family that is silica based, in which we can also count the feldspar material that is widely used for veneers, for example, now is getting stronger. So maintaining the same quality in terms of aesthetic results, but at the same time, they're getting stronger. So from 90 megapascal from the feldspar material, now we have more than 400 megapascal from the lithium desilicate, for example. So in this way, uh, using the bonding technique, of course, you have with both families, high strength and the silica base, much more chance to have a big survival rate with our restoration. So the old dentists are much more confident now to use it than before. And that, I think, was a big change. And we are improving every day. And I think is right now maybe the most important step. Of course, together with the CAD CAM technology that has completely changed our life and more and more will be you know, in our uh, offices every day. Maybe with the impression technique, maybe with the other kind of uh, applications, I think that we are ready to really work in the proper way with this kind of new technique and new materials. It's interesting. It seems like you've, you've seen a lot of different changes in the industry over time. And being a trendsetter, you know, working with the different materials, you've gotten to see you know, some of the improvements with aesthetics and strengths as well. Also being a trendsetter, a lot of dentists look to you as far as aesthetics goes to see what, what is the future of aesthetics. And so I was curious to you to ask you, do you, see, um, do you see the Americans adapting more of a European aesthetic or do you see the Europeans adopting more of an, an American aesthetic? That's a nice question. Uh, to answer to this question, I can tell you that until 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago, we could say that we have European style and American style. Uh, frankly speaking, as European, I didn't like this American style. It means that many patients want to become aligned and very, very white. It does is like a standardized model for everybody. In Europe, in, in Europe they still were accepting some, you know, little overlapping, I don't know, some movements of the teeth, some natural color, some, uh, you know, stain on the roots. Now, forget it. Every people want to become white and aligned like the States. And even though I love the States, of course, I come always to really enjoy to come here. But still, this kind of attitude I don't like so much. I mean, I still prefer to have some cases in which I could put some, you know, artistic things. That's become more vital, more, not, more, more natural than the you know, so-called American smile. <laughs> that is my, my, my idea. But I think now the Europeans are following the, the American style more and more. Not just the dentist. I'm saying the people, the, the, the patient. The patient want to become really white and aligned. That is their goal. And of course, the dentist has to follow this, this goal because the patient, 
you know, you know, they, they pay you to have a nice work. Of course, you should do something that you have to do, nothing you know, outside that, but that is what they request. Their expectation is to achieve this beautiful smile, and that is what we, most of the time, we are forced to do it in our patients. That's interesting. I mean, I see, I see, you know, Americans look to Italians too as, as trendsetters in the arts. You know, we're looking at Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo and, and, and certainly dentistry is no different. I mean, it's an art. So we're looking at some of the top clinicians such as yourself and looking at your artwork. And I think that, you know, some, some of the technicians or some of the, some of the dentists over here are kind of looking at seeing what the Italians are doing and trying to incorporate a little bit more of that natural beauty into what we do. So seeing a little bit more of a blend on the American side as well as to what the Europeans are doing. I'm still thinking that we have still some room available to really mediate this situation. It means that we are more and more aligned and white, but not completely 100%. It means that I think, for example, our dental technicians are really, I mean, super technicians, super, super, you know, uh, uh, master technician in layering the, the porcelain. And that's, uh, they create uh, some effects inside, translucency, opalescency, fluorescency, that is really something that can be considered artistic one. So I still think that these technicians, for example, can really teach something to the people that really don't have this kind of attitude. And you have still some room available, you know, to still be less vital than before, but still more artistic and more natural, still more natural. It's, it's almost a meeting in the middle. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that there's still some place available for that. I wanted to uh, ask you too about your ACE Institute and for, and for the Americans who are listening, that, that's ACE or ACE Institute. <laughs> so I'm going to pronounce that ACE Institute. Yes. Yeah, tell me about the ACE Institute in Pissarro, yes. Italy. Arch Institute uh, was created in 2008, so four years ago, uh, together with my new office, brand new office, uh, because it's next door to my office. Altogether, as around 600 square meters. I don't know in uh, how do you measure in a, in a, in a, um, American uh, value, but actually it's quite big. Uh, the office is not huge; it's uh, just five chairs, but a lot of space for uh, many other offices that are created for this, my staff. And then next door to the office, I have this uh, institute that can accommodate up to 28 participants. And I have also 14 uh, places for hands-on on the second floor. And uh, I have two tours that follow me on these uh, projects. And the project is uh, already there for a long time. It means that four years ago I started to open ACE, but before I already organized courses for Italian and foreign people. So I normally uh, have an annual course for dentists in Italian, and that uh, takes 30 days. So they come once a month, approximately for three days, for 10 months, in one year, globally. And then I have a specific courses, like four days, I don't know, on occlusion, four days on impression and to preparation, four days on ceramic work. So they are, uh, you know, specific topics. That's for Italian. Then for foreign people, I just started with four days course, but then many of them, I can say most of them, they asked me to have a longer uh, course, like a mini uh, annual course. So that's the reason why from this year I started to organize uh, three series of course, three models, four days each, all together are 12 days. And these 12 days, uh, I try to comprehend inside all the, you know, major important steps on process, especially on the systematic approach I normally use, especially on full mouth rehabilitation, or at least in big cases. And uh, at this point, we organize this during the summertime, because as you know, I live in a small city. It's not in the south of Italy. They would be offended in Italy to know that it's in the south. Not considered south, it's middle north of Italy, on Adriatic Sea. It's a nice place during the summertime. We have a very nice restaurant place, uh, you know, to go uh, on, on the evenings. But, you know, they come to me like uh, the first week of June, in the middle of uh, July, and at the beginning of September. That's uh, that, uh, three models, and uh, that uh, is something that allows the people coming from all around the world that uh, can take the, with them the families, 
maybe to have some vacation. Up to now, I have the third meeting of this annual course in uh, uh, next weekend, so for four days. And actually, I have 25 people, or 27 people, coming from 18 different countries. That's interesting. One from the States even, one from Saudi Arabia, from Singapore, from Australia, from Romania, from Spain, from everywhere. So that's very interesting. I have already a lot of requests for next year. And more than that, I have groups that are organized all together, like Japanese, like Russian groups. They ask me to come. There are already 20 people, so they are not free. Uh, uh, subscription, but it's just uh, a group of people that come to me. And every year I have uh, one group from Russia, one from Japan, one from uh, Singapore, different wow. situations like that. Yeah, we've discussed actually making the trip there in May for the first of the three-part continuum, which we'd enjoy mixing well, a trip of, <laughs> of business well, and pleasure, <laughs> for sure. Well, I want to thank you for your time today. Thanks. I really enjoyed our interview. Thank you for, you know, uh, calling me to come to you. That was a big honor to, to come to your, uh, to your uh, academy and uh, congratulations for the vitality I could see today on the academy. All the, all the members are very, very happy and uh, I think they are very close to each other. That is, I think, the main goal of every academy. Thank you very much. I appreciate right. that. It's a great Thanks. compliment. Thank you.